My first guest tonight is an astronaut who has lived longer in space than any other American. Joining us now from the International Space Station, please welcome astronaut Scott Kelly, everybody. Hey, Scott, good to see you. Well, good to be on your show. I uh, really appreciate the time you're taking to talk to us about the space program. Space is still the most exciting thing I can imagine. And talking to someone in orbit still is, uh, it's like I am an astronaut right now. So thank you for giving us the thrill to be talking with you. Now, this is hardly your first mission to the International Space Station. You were on the 99 mission that fixed the Hubble telescope, a second mission in 2007 that added new equipment to the station, and on your third mission in 2010, you spent 159 days in space. How long are you up this time? Well, this time it's going to be uh, close to a year, not, not, not exactly a year. We launched on March 28th, and we're going to land on March 2nd. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't done the math. I'm trying not to keep track of the days, but it's about uh, 340, I think. You've been in space longer than any other NASA astronaut, all right? Everybody is sucking your dust or whatever you have in space. I guess it's not dust. You're meteorites. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I, that is true that I have spent the most time in space for now, but there will be people that will beat me, I'm sure, in the future. So uh, these records are made to be broken. Did you have the foresight to enroll in a frequent flyer club before you went up there? Because I understand you've traveled 148 million miles. That's got to be an upgrade to the Sky Club. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Because we don't get paid any extra to do this, but if we could get the miles, especially that many, that'd be... That'd be pretty awesome, but uh, unfortunately not. How do you know when it's time to go to sleep? Because your day is shorter than most people's days. H how long does it take you to go all the way around the Earth? Well, it takes us 90 minutes, so uh, 16 times a day. So, you know, we just use a, a watch to tell the time, and when it's around uh, 1030 at night, I'm like, time to go to bed. That was less impressive than I hoped it would be. I thought there'd be some highly technical way you do this. No, that's just it. You look at your watch. I have one of those, Scott. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, simple things like this work pretty well up here. Why are you spending so much time in space? What is it on the planet you're trying to escape? Well, there's a, there's a lot of things down there that, uh, you know, when you see what's going on, you, you think you might like to escape. But, uh, but we're up here to learn more about living in space for a really long time so we can go to Mars someday. And the space station is a great place to learn that. It's a, a world-class laboratory, and we need to take advantage of it while we have it. What do you miss most about uh, being on Earth other than not having to wear a seatbelt to go to the bathroom? Well, there are, uh, you know, there are a lot of things we miss. Uh, you know, uh, human contact, people, your friends, your family. And also, going outside is very important. You know, even though we'll do a, do a spacewalk occasionally, it's not the same thing as, uh, you know, walking outside and having fresh air and the sun on your face and, uh, you know, feeling nature and, and the freedom in, uh, in a lot of cases to just do what you want. Now, I understand that one of the reasons you're up there is because you're an identical twin. Um, your brother Mark is back here on Earth, and he's also part of the experiment. What is the goal of the experiment other than to give you bragging rights over your brother? Which is a valid, valid reason to spend a year in space. Yeah, I guess I'll have uh, some, some bragging rights when I get back, having spent so much time up here. And I might, might actually take advantage of that a little bit. But after I was assigned to this flight, um, you know, some of the researchers at NASA started talking about... Um, you know, the fact that we are identical twins and NASA has a lot of uh, history and uh, data on my brother. So it was a great opportunity to look at the effects of this environment on the human body on a genetic level. Which of you two is the evil twin? Yeah, well, that, that would certainly have to be my brother. <laughs> uh, what are some of the big effects you're expecting to see uh, when you compare Mark to you? Something like, is bone density one of the things you'll be checking? Like, at this point, after a year in space, who has greater bone density, you or a sparrow? <laughs> yeah, our bones turn to dust while we're up here, but uh, they would, you know, <laughs> over time, if you lived here forever, mm -hmm. you, wouldn't, 
you wouldn't need your bones really to hold your, uh, you know, your your meat. Your meat. <laughs> your your meat, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you'd you'd probably you'd probably you know if you lived here for forever, you'd you'd have no reason to have much of a skeleton. So, um, mm -hmm. but like I said, we do things to prevent that from happening, and uh, you know I'm sure my brother will have a little bit more more uh, bone mass when I get back, but uh, hopefully I'll be better in other ways. Now, do you get a chance to exercise up there? Have you been on to my treadmill, the Colbert, the combined operational load-bearing external resistance treadmill? I absolutely have. I was actually on it today, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a great piece of equipment. You should be very proud for, uh, for providing that to NASA. You're welcome, Scott. You're welcome. I put a lot of thought into that. Is there any psychological impact up there? I mean, do you, is there, I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, how often do you experience space madness? I think NASA does a good job at picking folks to do this kind of thing. And although I feel like I've been up here a long time, I don't feel like I'm, I'm close at all to, to space madness. <laughs> um, who else is up there with you? How many countries? So right now, there are six of us on board, three uh, Russian cosmonauts, another, another American astronaut, and the uh, first British astronaut from, from official British astronaut actually working for the government from the United Kingdom, uh, Tim Peake. Now, does the British astronaut uh, drive the space station on the other side <laughs> of orbit? Yeah, I guess there are, there are things that uh, I've recognized that he does uh, a little bit differently. How do you blow off steam? Are you allowed to have maybe a little uh, cocktail at the end of the day or uh, share a beer with your compatriots? You know, that'd be nice, but uh, unfortunately, that's against the rules. Are you telling me the Russians did not bring any vodka? <laughs> as far as I know, there is no vodka on the space station. <laughs> Um, you've become a celebrity on the internet because your Instagram account showing daily pictures from space now have over 600,000 followers. And your photos have been shared countless times. You're something of like the Kim Kardashian of the International Space Station. You, who knows what you could balance on your ass at this point? Okay. <laughs> That was answered with great discretion, Scott. I salute you. Um, Scott, thank you so much uh, for talking to us. Uh, good luck in space. Watch out for the space madness. And we'll hope we can see you again when you get back to Earth in March. My pleasure, Stephen. And, uh, you know, thanks for letting me uh, join your show today. Oh, it's our honor. Scott Kelly from space, everybody. We'll be right back. Oh! And he nails it.